We got a 1941 Farmall H, which back in 1941, you were considered a pretty good farmer if you had one of these. Or if you had more than one, you were really an elite farmer. But this is a six volt system. It has hydraulics. I've already done the starter on this. But this is a six volt system now. And all of you that have a Farmall H, you know how inadequate a six volt system is. First of all, Steiner tractor parts. They got the parts you need in there. They got the conversion kit. They actually have manuals for these tractors in this catalog. This really makes this a sweet conversion. Got a one wire alternator. The wire comes off the back of the alternator right here. We got the brackets to put the alternator on. We got the belts. Uh, you don't want to use the, the stock amp meter on there. You got to use a, a 60 amp amp meter and you have to use heavier wire. The wiring that's on here is way too small. The six volt stuff is way too small and we'll talk about all that. So we'll show you what we recommend that you do. You've got to take this hood off. You've got clamps on each side. You've got to take this air cleaner off. Comes right off. Muffler. Got to come off. Get this hood off and set it aside. This is a six volt coil. You can, you can switch the wires. We have to convert this over to from a positive ground to a negative ground. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna actually take this coil off and put an internally resisted coil on this thing. That's really gonna be awesome. Okay, just lift the old coil out. I've started the, the wires for the coil. I've already got them off back to here. I'm taking the wires off. You got the retainers. Don't take the retainers off the tractor because you're going to run your new wires all through the same containers. We go back to here. Now I'm going to take the wires off the, the ignition switch and off the starter switch. So that's the next thing we do. Get them off the starter switch. You want to keep everything. And make sure, you know, Try not to drop everything. Just put the put the same screw back in the, the switch because we're gonna. This is a good switch, so we're gonna use this switch. Okay, we got the wires disconnected from the generator. All that stuff is out of the way. Now we're gonna take the generator off. It, the belt is still connected. You can do it two ways. You can get the belt off first, or you can. The way I like to do it is just take the generator loose and then. The, flip the belt out of the way. And just flip the belt right out of the way. The generator's off. What we got to do now, we got to get this belt off of here and replace it. So we got to get the belt from the, uh, the crankshaft belt that comes up on the pulley over here. We got to get that off now. So we'll show you how you got to get that off of there. Bring the camera on the other side. What you got, some of these have an Allen set screw, some have a bolt, uh, you know, just depending on if the tractor's ever been worked on or not. Um, you got to take that, that is a set screw though, on that pulley. You got to get that set screw out of here. On a new uh, water pump, it will have the Allen set screw. But this set screw goes down in an indent right there and it, it keeps that pulley from spinning. This collar turns and opens up and, and releases this belt. So don't hit this with a chisel. I recommend that you use a large pair of channel locks. 
You just have to keep turning this until you get that loose enough that that belt will come out of there. And you got to put that belt up over that the fan. And I'll just take that belt, start working it over the fan. Turn the fan, take it over the next one. Just keep going until you get the belt all the way off. Now, that's the original belt. The other one, we're gonna fish it back on the same way. Then we gotta fish it over this belt, put it on there, and then we'll, we'll put the brackets on and put the alternator on and we can adjust this all up. Bracket goes right back where the other one was. You can see the alternator bracket is already, I put that on there already. Just take these bolts back out of the head and put these bolts back in to hold the new bracket on. We just put them on there a little and kind of snug them up just a little bit just so everything is not flopping around. Alternator in here. The bolt goes all the way through the alternator. Lock washer on there. Put the nut on. Okay, we have the, the bracket on there. We got the alternator mounted on. Now what we gotta do is just bring this up. They provide the, the new bracket arm. Bring this up. Make sure everything's gonna line up here, which it is. It comes with a new belt. I'm just going to go ahead and fish the belt through from the back side and then I'll bring it up and put it on the pulley. You don't want to put too much torque on this thing. That's, that's tight enough right now. That's pretty good. It has adjustments up, it has adjustments down. Like I said, we got the new coil in. This is the barrel coil. If you have, if your tractor, ha your distributor goes out here and the barrel sets on top of the distributor, this is the one that you use. But if you use this, you also will have to have this resistor in the line. The, normally you would ha have to mount that resistor right here and you would run the wire from the coil to the resistor and from the resistor to the ignition. We don't have to do that. So we're just going to go from the back of the alternator to the ignition and then from the ignition back to the coil. And that'll be the next step. That'll be the next step. Okay, got the alternator on, got the belts on. What we've done is we run a 10 gauge wire from the alternator. You can see I ran it through the the fasteners all the way, done this properly. You can get a, a loom or a casing, and which I probably will do later. And we ran this wire back to the, the new amp gauge. It goes to the negative post on the new amp gauge. And the reason you need a new amp gauge, this is a 12 volt 60 amp amp meter. And then from the positive post, goes to the, the actual starter switch and you put that on the post where the battery cable connects to the starter post. Then you run, a, um, that's a 10 gauge wire as well. Then you run, a, you can go down to a 12 gauge wire and you that are not familiar with that, the larger the number, the smaller the wire. 10 gauge is the largest, 12 is the, the next largest. Then you run a 12 gauge wire from the, the positive post to the starter switch. The actual switch, you just run that wire down, that's a 12 gauge wire that we ran, to the starter switch. And then on the other post of the starter switch, you run that wire to the positive post on the coil. Then from the negative post on the coil, 
we ran a new wire up to the distributor. So I can recap that. From the alternator, 10, 10 gauge wire to the negative post on the new amp meter. Then we went from the positive post on the amp meter to the actual starter button switch on the post where the battery cable connects. Then we went from the, uh, we also went off that same post to the ignition switch with a 12 gauge wire. Then from the ignition switch on the other post to the positive post on the coil. Then we went from the negative post on the coil to the distributor. So that completes that cycle. Now we'll show you what we did on the battery. When you convert a 6 volt to a 12 volt, you have to switch the ground. So what we have now is we're actually grounding this positive side of the battery to the tractor. And you notice we have a very heavy ground wire. You, you want to have the heavy ground wire when you do this conversion. And basically, we just connect this up. Negative to the ground on the tractor, positive to the ignition switch. We'll just tighten this up, put this thing back together and see what we got. Okay, right now we have all the wires connected to the amp, the new amp meter, to the starter switch, to the ignition switch, to the coil, and to the alternator. And now we're just going to do a test test on this to see if it starts and runs and then we can put the put the bonnet back together which you have to take the bonnet apart to get to the amp gauge wires so we'll just put the muffler back on turn the fuel back on we've got the battery connected again we we'll turn the fuel back on we'll make sure this thing is in neutral and you can see we got the tires chalked on this We've got a chalk under the front end. And we got the fuel back on. It's in neutral. Turn the switch on. And you're going to make sure these wires are not touching anything that's hot. That's really important. to do yes is put this back in here you know run all the wire looms uh, pr to protect these wires and put this thing back together put the hood back on we're good to take this thing back out and start working on some food plots folks you can see that this is a fairly simple uh, process if you do it according to the way we just uh, taught you how to do this and hopefully with with our help of showing you this and Steiner tractor parts catalog you'll be able to do your tractor and we believe that converting a tractor to a 12 volt which allows you to have brighter lights quicker starts starts in cold weather I think it's very beneficial and advantageous to convert your tractor to a 12 volt but you want to keep all your original parts um, just in case Okay, you can see the hood is closed, and I can stick my fingers up in there. There is clearance. Come over here with the camera. Right here, this way. You can see the alternator's in there, and there is clearance. When you put this down, it doesn't touch. It's not touching. There's clearance in there right now. So... That's a big deal with Steiner's uh, conversion kit, is you don't have to worry about that. Okay, we put new lights on this, and you can see that they're working. 12 volt lights, they're working right now. But if you don't put the new lights on there, the 12 volt lights, Steiner provides uh, the 12 volt bulbs, 
and you want to make sure you do the bulb conversion because the six bolt bulbs won't take the you know the power off that 12 volt battery so this is an awesome conversion if you got a tractor like this it's definitely something you want to do well we just want to point out that whatever classic tractor you have Steiner has what you need to convert all of the old tractors to 12 volt We've done this 841 to a 12 volt. Same thing we did to that H. We did this 841 the same way. It's important to notice the size of the ground cables. A ground cable needs to be, uh, you know, to be able to handle, you know, the power that's going through it. So if you want to see the facelift on this 841, this entire facelift, everything we did to this tractor is available on Steiner's website. We really, want to encourage you to do business with Steiner because they have all of the new parts you need for old tractors.